1.5 is about set notation. So it's called sets. Basically in math, we have ways of notating or representing uh, groups of objects or elements. And that's what the sets do for us. So a set, by definition, is a collection of objects. For us, usually those objects will be numbers. And in math, when you refer to objects, another word for it would be the word elements. Pieces. Now, as far as our notation goes, we have a couple different ways of representing sets. We're going to explore both of those. We have the roster method, and we have uh, set builder notation. So first, starting with the roster method, let's explore that some. So here's our first example of a set, and it's going to be within this category of roster method, and I'll show you why. X, Y, Z. So what this means here is that whatever I'm referring to, whatever group it is I'm talking about, the pieces or the members of the group include X, Y, and Z. Sets, and I guess I should put it up here on top too, are signified using these curly things called braces. Okay. It's not like parentheses or brackets or even the absolute value symbol in the sense that you're not doing any kind of operation. You're not trying to add, subtract, nothing like that on the inside of these or nothing applied with what they're doing. All it does is it just says, hey, this is a group, this goes together. So that's why we make them curly, so that we know that they're different than, than what we normally would see with parentheses and things like that. Now the roster method, this first example that I've given you within that, what it does is it actually lists the pieces. It lists the elements. So see here how we have them listed with commas in between? That's an example. For another example, using the roster method, I could say write the set of integers, and I'm working with the author here from your text, if you're following from that section. Between 0 and 10. Now we have to be very careful with the words here on what he wants or what the author wants. Because notice he doesn't say to include 0 and 10. He says between them. So if we're going to list out the stuff between 0 and 10, specifically the integers. Remember, integers just include, um, here, I'll change colors, integers, which just the set of uh, negative and positive stuff. Remember how when we introduced it, I showed you negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, on and on. Actually, I used set notation when we introduced it, didn't I? But remembering that, the integers are just the whole numbers, not including fractions or decimals, only talking about positives, negatives, and zero. It wants me to list out those pieces. So, not including zero, I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. That's the answer. This is the group that exam this example here was asking you to represent. And so we just listed it out and we put braces around the outside. Now, of course, I don't have to give you a finite or a um, limited set to represent. Usually with listing, that's, you know, you're going to have stuff that you can list out by pieces, but not always. For example, I could say, Remember, the whole numbers were the ones that included zero. The natural slash counting numbers just included what you naturally say when you count. One, two, three, four. So for this example, well, we know these things go on forever. Remember the number line when we looked at it? And we said, hey, natural stuff, we wouldn't have the zero. We just have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, going on and on. But remember how we said the arrow goes to the right because numbers keep going forever. They keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that means the list will not be what we call finite. It's not just going to have the items in it. We'll have to kind of show the pattern and then we'll put dots inside our list, inside our roster list, to uh, show that it keeps going. Since there's a pattern, we can do that. Let's see, the pattern is one, two, three, four. So once we've listed a few, we can stop since we know it goes forever. Three dots and close. And what that tells the reader is, hey, this is the pattern. We're going up by one every time. Keep going forever. And we showed that the first element was a one. That's where it started and then it kept going. And of course, if you remember up here uh, with the integers, uh, we had dots on both sides because the negative stuff on that number line kept going to the left and the positive stuff kept going to the right. So it continued forever on both sides. So you can put dots on both sides as long as there's a pattern in the middle that you're showing. Next method, and this is a little bit out of order with how the, uh, how the book's written, but not a whole lot, and I think it makes a little more sense as far as when I'm teaching it. So the next method, other than roster method that you have, you've learned roster so far, was to list. The next one is called set builder. No. This one's actually very similar to the roster, except the roster lists stuff out in pieces, and this thing's just going to represent it. It's going to represent the idea. When I say represent, I mean, for example, uh, it'll use inequality signs a lot. You'll, you'll tend to see tends to use your inequality signs like less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, that kind of stuff, or even equal to. Something else you're going to see, just so you know what it stands for, remember that we said sets were made up of elements, the pieces. Whenever you're in a set like this, in this category of notation, we tend to use this symbol E. It's a sideways E and it means element of. Because the set builder stuff is going to be a little more general, it's just going to represent stuff more generally, we have to be more specific with the way we set it up in other ways by saying element piece of, for example, the integers. That way, since if we were talking about integers, we'd know, oh, it's just the whole numbers, including positive and negative. So we do use this with set builder. Let me show you an example. And I'll just start with notation and I'll, I'll help talk you through what the symbols mean. I know these symbols look crazy to you, possibly. Okay. So what in the world does that mean? That's set builder notation. Well first, this says, hey guys, we're going to use an X. I know that's kind of simple and it looks harder than what it is, but that's all it's saying. Hey, X is what we're talking about here, such that, or you could think of it as where, X where, X such that, and then the really important part of this problem, the part that makes the biggest difference, is this part right here, X less than 10. This right here is what's going to represent the general idea. This represents the values for x. Or the values you're talking about. And then of course this stuff right here makes it more specific. It tells a uh, specific category that you're getting your numbers from. That means numbers. I'm just I'm being a little bit abbreviating there. So this reads x such that x is less than 10 and x is an element of the positive integers. Again, it means that it, the, what the numbers we're talking about that we're representing here in the statement with x's come from positive integers. I'll remind you what that is in a second. And they're less than 10. 
So let's look at those integers. Let's, let's see what the regular integers are. So I'm going to say recall. All integers. Let's see, we'll start with that negative 5. That's where I usually start. You can start wherever you want. Remember the idea with the set stuff is that you're looking at the pattern of the pieces. I'll go a little higher with this. So here's the integers, all of them that we have to choose from. Remember, they are just um, whole numbers. We haven't gotten into fractions or decimals quite yet um, with this notation. Um, so here's all the integers. We have the dots here saying it goes on forever in this direction, and the dots here saying it goes on forever in this direction. Integers, remember, are just numbers that are whole, including positive and negative. So when it says positive integers, it's being very specific, isn't it? It's saying, okay, the first thing that you should look at is nothing that doesn't qualify as positive. So none of this negative stuff. And the zero, it can be debatable in mathematics if it's going to be considered positive or neutral. But this author tends to keep it neutral. So we'll say, you know what, that's not positive either. We're just going to look at the main numbers. Then, once you've decided the category that you're going to pull from, you say x is less than 10. Okay, well, let's see, that includes... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It does not include 10 because remember, there's no equal there. When you have a line up under there and it means less than or equal to, you would have included the 10. In this case, it was just strictly less than. So the numbers circled are the only ones that qualify for what this right here is standing for. And if I wanted, I could use the roster method and list those out. 1, 2, 3. So we could also do that. But the point is that both forms of notation do work for us.